We can't talk about bodybuilding without talking about weight training. With weight training being the center of bodybuilding, professional athletes lifting heavy weights has always been the preconception. Therefore, it may be surprising to learn that there are professional bodybuilders that train with light weights. This video will look at the science behind high load training and low weight training, then draw a fact-based conclusion. So ensure you watch till the end to get all the tidbits. Let's go. First, a quick review. A study review published by the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, comprising 30 studies related to resistance training and hypertrophy, revealed that two principal things happen in your muscles when engaged in any workout. Your muscles experience mechanical tension and metabolic buildup. Both are catalysts for the muscle to start a hypertrophic process. The type of exercise you do determines which of these pathways you engage the most. So, for heavy weight training or high resistance training, you engage more mechanical tension with a little bit of metabolic buildup. On the other hand, light weight exercise does not engage any of these two in any significant degree. The only way forward with low weight training is to have very high repetitions. If your reps are high enough, then you can cause your metabolic buildup to rise enough to levels that can cause hypertrophy. Essentially, this peer review found out that both high weight training and light weight training can independently cause muscle growth if done correctly. What weight is heavy or light? There is no fixed weight that is heavy or light. It depends on the individual. You have to find your own limits. To do this, you'd need to find out what your one rep max, one RM, is for each part that you're building. Your bench press one rep max will be different from your one rep max in squats or deadlifts. This simply means finding out the maximum weight you can pull or push in one unrepeatable rep done in a full range of motion, resulting in an immediate fatigue. I'll talk about how important working with your one rep max is, how to calculate this for different body parts, and how you can effectively use this in your workout progress in another video. So subscribe now and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss it. A low weight training will be one that involves using your body weight or using a load up to 60% of your 1RM, while a heavy weight training would involve 80 to 90% of your 1RM. Can both really cause muscle growth? In a study by the world renowned muscle hypertrophy researcher, Professor Brad Schoenfield, PhD, it was discovered that both heavy and lightweight training resulted in muscle growth. Before you jump into conclusions here that any weight would give you a desired result, Please pay attention to the details of this study. Training volume played a key role in the researcher's outcome. Training volume is composed of the weight or resistance moved, the distance moved, and the amount of reps. The research participants who trained with heavy weights did 8 to 12 reps per set, while the low weight trainers did 25 to 30 reps per set. This study has been misquoted by many influences in the bodybuilding world as a definite answer to the equality of both low and high weight training as long as the reps of the low weight training are higher and taken to the point of failure. This is not totally true. There are some significant differences that could impact your progress in the long run. A look at the results showed that indeed, muscles such as the elbow extensors, elbow flexors, and quadriceps femoris were very similar in gains regarding to the weight training. For example, the quadriceps femoris thickened by 9.3% for low weight training as and 9.5% for high weight training, but we see a great difference in strength and endurance gains. High weight training yielded a 19.6% increase in strength compared to the 8.8% low weight training achieved. Low weight training on the other hand was better for improving endurance at 6.5%, while heavy weight training was at a very low 2.2%. These results matter if you're seriously seeking the most efficient path to muscular hypertrophy. For heavy weight training, I would recommend three sets of 10 to 12 reps with a weight of 80% 1 RM. This can be taken up to 85% 1 RM with a drop set of 8 to 10, 5 to 8 reps, and finish with a 3 to 5 reps. Low weight training has been found to be equally efficient at 35% of your 1 RM and three sets of 30 to 40 reps. Let's understand how low weight training can induce muscle growth. The metabolic stress effect. When you train to exhaustion, your muscle cells become deprived of oxygen 
as enough cannot be supplied and metabolized to provide you with the energy to carry on, leading to a high accumulation of metabolites such as lactic acid, adenosine monophosphate, AMP, and phosphate inorganic. Your body responds to the accumulation through increased hormonal release, production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, and cell swelling. This would then trigger an anabolic signaling, resulting in more muscle protein synthesis. As for mechanical tension, hypertrophy is triggered by signals from mechanosensors that perceive mechanical tension restricting muscular contractions due to the high weight used in training. These signal cascades trigger a biochemical process similar to that produced in metabolic stress, but using a different pathway, leading to muscle protein synthesis just as in the former case. The question of which is better between high load and low load training is a matter of addressing the gray areas between the two. We have to consider two fundamental principles that you must consider. These are proper form and maximum recoverable volume, MRV. But I'm going to focus on MRV, since proper form is self-explanatory. Maximum recoverable volume, as defined by Dr. Mike Isatel, a bodybuilder and PhD holder in sports physiology. MRV is the maximum training volume you can endure. Going beyond would mean risking injury. According to Dr. Mike, this is necessary for you to maximize your muscle gains from a workout. At first, this would seem to endorse heavy weight training, but it doesn't because heavy weight trainings are based on low reps. You cannot have a high rep heavy weight training and not exceed your MRV. On the other hand, you can still reach your MRV with low weights but very high reps. In both cases, a high training volume must be achieved. One of the issues you will have with low weight training is fatigue. You require very high reps to have an effective training volume. This could easily cause mental or physical fatigue because of the high repetition. It could be severe in some cases, causing nausea and vomiting. You're also likely to undermine your form. Doing high reps can easily lead to cheating, such as engaging momentum and gravity to aid your lifts and drops. This workout strategy also demands very high calories. You'd need to compensate for calorie loss because of the extended workout. If your calorie intake is low, this could reverse the results you're aiming for. At the end, it's an issue of practicality. The choice at the end of the day is how practical either strategy is. Heavy weight training would not be practical for trainers with joint issues or anyone just recovering from injury. You can keep your training with low weights until full recovery. Beginners may also want to start with low weight training before moving on to high weights. As a matter of fact, a beginner is going to get faster results than an advanced trainer using low weights. So if you are a beginner, this is a strategy you can explore. Beginners may also lack form and experience needed to safely go into heavy weight training. Older trainers can also switch to low weights, high reps for safety reasons. However, there's a limit to how far low weights can take you. It'd be difficult to continue your progress just by increasing reps. Remember that strength gain is very minimal in low weight training. This would limit your one rep maximum and this may keep your muscle growth in stagnation. This is where heavy weight lifting can be an advantage. You can progressively overload and work up your progress. Lower body training can be more efficiently done with heavy weight training, as progress is more practical. In conclusion, between heavy weight or light weight training, which is the best for muscle growth? I would choose heavy weights because progress can be fast and more practical. Some bodybuilders think a blend of the two works best. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Remember to like, subscribe, and be back for my next insightful upload. For now, keep grinding.